In the last video, we created cards and added the logic to drag them around the screen. In this video, we will add the ability to hover over cards and apply an effect when we do. Implementing this will also allow us to fix a bug in our game. My name is Barry, and if this is the first time you're tuning into the series, I highly recommend you watch part 1, which will be the top link in the description. So to get started, let's open back up our project here, and let's navigate to the card scene. Let's open card.tscn here, and now if we click on Area 2D, and if we go over here where it says Inspector, and we click the Node tab, you can see we have these mouse entered and mouse exited signals, and we need a script for these signals to attach to. And like I said in the last video, we don't want to handle any logic within the card itself, so we want to attach these signals to the card manager, but it's not really in the scope here, so we're going to have to attach them manually through code. So back in our card scene, we're going to right-click on card and attach a new script, call this script card, and this is going to give us a place to connect those signals I was talking about earlier. So we can go ahead and click on Area 2D, go, make sure you're in the Node tab, and we'll double-click on this mouse entered signal here, and just make sure it's attached to the card script, and we can do the same then for mouse exited. So Godot is making this hover functionality really easy for us with signals, and we're just going to go ahead and make sure it works here. So I'm going to print hovered on this Area 2D mouse entered, and I'm going to print hovered off in the mouse exited. We can then test this real quick by just pressing run, make sure your output is open down below, and you'll see anytime I hover over the card it says hovered, and same for hovered off. Now we could handle the logic for a card hover here, but again we really don't want to, we really want to send this information to the card manager. So I'm going to declare two new signals, signal hovered and signal hovered off up at the top here, and then down here instead of printing I'm going to emit these signals. So for mouse entered I'm going to emit the hovered signal, and I'm also going to pass in self which self here is going to be the card, the card that was hovered over in this case. And then I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to do the same for mouse exited and just replace that signal name. So now we just need to connect those signals to the card manager. And if I go into main here, you can see that I have both of my cards as child of card manager. And that's going to be really important for this next step because I'm going to go back into the card script and in the ready function that's already been provided, I'm going to say get parent, which in this case is going to be the card manager. And then I'm going to call a function that doesn't exist yet. I'm just going to call it connect card signals and I'm going to pass in self, which is this card. And so what this does is when a card is instantiated, when it comes into existence for the first time, this ready code is going to run and it's going to say call the function connect card signals in parent and parent is going to be the card manager. Keep in mind, if a card is not a child of card manager, this is going to throw a fatal error at runtime. So now I'm going to copy this function connect card signals that we're calling. I'm going to go into the card manager script and I'm going to create a new function there, pasting the name, and it's going to be taking in a card since in the card script we're passing in self. And in here we're going to write card.connect and then we're going to give the name of the signal that we declared at the top of the card script, which is hovered and it's going to be in quotes, and then we're also going to give the name of the function that we want to connect it to. So this function doesn't exist yet, so I'm just making up the name on hovered over card, and then we're going to copy that line, paste it, and then we're going to change the name of the signal to hovered off, which was the second name of the signal we created, and then here we can also just change this to on hovered off card or whatever. And now we can just copy this on hovered over card, and let's make a new function down here, and we'll paste that name just to make sure it's exact. And don't forget this function is actually going to be taking in a card because if we go back into our card script, you can see where we are emitting the signal, we're passing in self, which is that instance of the card. So now let's just print in this function, we'll print hovered. And then we can just go ahead and basically copy and paste this function and just make sure that the names are changed and make sure that the unhovered over card is now changed to unhovered off card or whatever you put for the second signal. And we'll just print hovered off here. And let's just give it a run here to make sure it works and we should be able to hover over and off a card and yep, it, you can see it printing down there. So this is really good. So this means we can start processing those signals that are being captured in the card manager. So now I'm going to create a new function called highlight card and this is just going to be called when we want to apply some effects to the card and it's going to take in the card and it's also going to take in a boolean called hovered and then I'm going to have an if condition so if hovered so if that boolean is true I'm going to apply some effects so I'm going to affect the card scale first so I'm going to go card.scale and I'm going to set it equal to a new vector 2 
and I'm going to set it to 1.05 on the X and the Y. So that'll make the card a little bit bigger when you hover over it. And I'm also going to change the card's Z index, which is the layer that it's rendered. So if it's rendered behind or in front of other cards, I'm going to set that to 2. And then I'm just going to set an else statement and I'm going to set these effects back to normal. So if hovered is false, those effects will apply. And now I'm just going to call this function on hovered over card, passing in the card and also passing in true that it is hovered over and then paste it into the other function and just say false. So let's test that out now. And as you can see, when we hover over the card, we get that really cool effect, which is awesome. But there is a problem and you can see that if I kind of stack the cards like this, it performs the effect even if you hover over the card behind. So let's fix that. So firstly, let's go to the top of the script here and just add a new variable that's going to be a boolean called is hovering on card. And then we'll copy that variable name and down in the function on hovered over card, we're going to have a new if condition. So we're going to say if, and then we're going to paste our new variable if is hovering on card. And then we're going to add an exclamation mark here to reverse that. So if not hovering over a card, then we're going to apply the highlight effects to the card. And we're also going to say is hovering on card equals true. Then down in the unhovered off card function, we're going to set is hovering on card equal to false. If we run this now just to check, it kind of is fixed the first time you hovered onto a card at the back, but then not the second time. So we just need a little more code. So in the unhovered off function, I'm going to comment out that is hovering on card equals false. And what we want to do now is we want to check if we've hovered off one card and straight onto another card. And to do this, it's going to be really easy. We can just create a new variable called new card hovered, and then we can reuse our raycast that we already created, which just returns the card at the cursor, which is exactly what we want. And then we'll just add a new if condition. So if the raycast returned something, or if you did hover straight onto another card, then we'll call our highlight card function, passing in the new card that was hovered to apply the hover effects to that card. And then also in, I'm going to create an else statement. And if you hovered onto nothing, we're just going to set is hovering over card equal to false. And I'll just get rid of this commented line from earlier. So now if we give this a run, we can see that the hover is working perfectly. But there is at the start of the video, as I mentioned, a bug in our game. And I'll show you this now that if we stack two cards on top of each other, kind of like this, and place our cursor in the way that it's over both the cards, if you left click, you just start dragging a random card. And we want to drag the card that's on top. And we can fix this by adjusting our raycast check for card function. But first, I'm just going to print result and show you exactly why it's returning a random card. You'll see if I hit play now and I just place my cursor in the middle of both cards and click the output will print an array and that array will contain information of here you can see there's the first card and here's the second card. And I just want to return the card that's on top and you know from earlier when we were doing our highlight card function that the Z index is responsible for whether a card is rendered above or below other cards. So I'm just going to return here but I'm going to replace what we had before. I'm going to comment that out and I'm going to call a new function get card with highest Z index and we're going to pass in result. So now I'm going to come down here and create that get card with highest Z index function and you can see we're passing in results and I'm going to take it in as cards. And in here, we're going to assume that the first card passed in has the highest Z index to start. So we'll create a new variable here called highest Z card and we'll set it equal to the first card that's being passed in. And don't forget that we're just, that's a bunch of garbage. So we actually need dot collider dot get parent to get the card itself. And I'm also going to create a second variable called highest Z index. And I'm going to set that equal to the Z index of the highest Z card that we've already set. And now that we have those, the next step is to loop through the rest of the cards looking for a card with a higher Z index. So we'll create a for loop here and we're going to skip the first card since we're already assuming that it has the highest Z index. We don't need to loop through it. And then within the for loop, we're going to create a new variable called current card and set it equal to the current card in the loop. Make sure to use dot collider dot get parent again. And then we're going to check if the current card in the loop has a higher Z index than our current highest Z index. And if it does, we're going to set our current highest Z card equal to that card currently in the loop. And we're also going to set our current highest Z index equal to that card's Z index. And that's everything we want in the for loop. And now after the for loop, we're just going to return the highest Z card. And if we run that now, you can see that it will always drag the card on top, which is exactly what we want. Now there's one more effect I want to add here, and that's when you are dragging a card, I want some sort of feedback for that. 
So up here in the card manager script below the input function, I'm going to declare two new functions, start drag and finish drag. Then I'm going to cut this line up here and paste it into my start drag function. And I'm going to call start drag up here instead. Don't forget to pass in card because we need it in the start drag function. Don't forget to take it in there in the function too. And we're also going to do the same with that card being dragged equals null line, extracting it out into the finish drag function. So that just tidies up the script a little bit, but now I'm going to take the card scale effect from our highlight function. I'm going to paste it up here in finish drag and in start drag. And I'm going to set the scale to 1 on start drag and 1.05 on finish drag. This is going to give us an error in finish drag because card doesn't exist in this scope. So I'm going to cut this line, paste it above card being dragged equals null, and we'll set the card being dragged scale instead. And if we run it now, we can see that when we click and drag a card, that its hover effect stops applying and it just gives some really nice feedback to know when you're dragging a card. But you can see there's kind of now one last problem left that when we're dragging and we leave a card like that, you can see it unapplies the effect. So let's just fix that really quick. And I'm going to do that by adding an if condition here in the unhovered off card function. And I'm just going to make sure that we are not currently dragging a card. So I'm just going to take this card being dragged. Don't forget the exclamation mark there so it's not being dragged. And that should be that fix. So let's give it a test and just drag a card, drag it over the other card and all is looking good. That looks amazing. And that's it for this tutorial guys. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we are gonna be working on card slots that you can see on the screen now. If you like this video or found it helpful, be sure to drop a like below to help this channel grow. And also if you're interested in upcoming tutorials and devlogs, be sure to subscribe.